today guys we're over here at Muffler Works in Newburgh. Um, we're here to talk to you a little bit about suspension setup, uh, more specifically understeer. Now uh, that is a problem that plagues a lot of Subarus and uh, we have done a lot to this car to combat that. Uh, and I know a lot of people are curious about what it takes to fix the understeer, so to speak. Uh, you don't necessarily fix it all, but you can uh, reduce its effects. Now what is understeer? Understeer is the kind of inherent tendency of a vehicle to plow through a corner, so to speak, so when you have a high entry speed and you're cornering really hard, uh, you turn the wheel, but the car's still going straight. Uh, now that can be a problem for a lot of reasons, um, and one of the major things that causes understeer is and mostly with Subarus is just their, it's kind of an inherent design flaw with their weight distribution. Now, Subarus have most of their weight in the front. They have, this car has about a 60-40 weight distribution, which is pretty good for a Subaru. Most of them are about uh, 65-35, uh, and that is mostly due to the way that the car is designed. Uh, so you have a lot of weight hanging over the front wheels, which is the motor, and because the front differential has to be lined in line with the front wheels, you have a lot of drivetrain weight that hangs really close uh, to the front in the engine bay, and that's just kind of the way these cars are. So what we've done to kind of combat that, and there's a lot of different things that we do, um, one of the main things is bushings. So most manufacturers, all manufacturers, fit their cars with rubber bushings, suspension bushings, and that is mostly to take up uh, road vibration and make the, the ride nice and comfy. Um, but we don't want that, we don't care about that. What we are concerned about is suspension geometry change. And when you're cornering really hard and those rubber bushings are you know, 20 plus years old, they'll deflect and actually the suspension will shift around in the corner and make it really hard to maintain a good contact patch to the road. So by replacing all of those rubber bushings with polyurethane bushings, we reduce all the suspension geometry change and kind of take up all the, the backlash that's in the suspension. Um, another thing that we do, is running a good set of coilovers on your car that has the correct spring rates. Now, we're running the BCBRs. Uh, they don't necessarily have a ton of suspension travel overall, but they do have the correct spring rates for this car's weight. Uh, and we're running about, I think it's a 9K front uh, and a 7K rear, which is kind of set up for the 60-40 weight distribution. And the other thing that coilovers give you is uh, dampening adjustment with the 32-way controllable coilover and you have a little bit more control over your suspension geometry. Now with the dampening, um, what is kind of counterintuitive for a lot of people, the thing that really helps uh, get rid of understeer is running a, uh, a softer front and a stiffer rear. Now you can do that a couple ways, is you can run a tighter valving in the rear than you do in the front by controlling the dampening on the coilover, or you can change your sway bar thickness. Now on my car, I'm running a stock STI front sway bar and an aftermarket rear sway bar, and what that does is that actually kind of changes the grip ratio, uh, and by stiffening up the rear you actually shift some of the grip to the front of the car because the the front of the car has more contact patch on the ground which of course gets rid of understeer now with your suspension geometry a couple things that you can do is by increasing the negative camber when you load the car into a corner you increase your contact patch because what tends to happen is as the car, the, sh the weight shifts to the outside of the car, it actually flattens the suspension out. That's why a lot of suspension goes negative as it travels up and goes positive as it travels down. So by adding a little bit of negative camber in our initial suspension geometry, we may, you know, and of course this isn't ideal with your everyday driver because you're gonna wear out your tires really fast. Uh, we may be reducing our contact patch when we're going straight, but we're increasing our contact patch on the ground where it matters, which is in the corner. So right now I'm running about, the factory specification for this car is about 1.1 degrees of negative camber in the front and about one degree of negative camber in the rear. 
and I'm running about 1.5 degrees in the front and 1.3 degrees in the rear. Then of course, one of the main things that you can do with any car to help combat understeer or oversteer is having a good set of tires. Uh, most factory tires or equivalent daily driver tires, you know, you have a high tread wear, which means that the compound is usually really stiff, uh, really hard because you want it to last a long time. And the sidewalls flex a little bit more because you want the comfort and you want the, the tires to kind of act as suspension along with your suspension. But with a racing tire, uh, which this is actually still a DOT approved tire, but it's a 200 tread wear with a AAA temperature rating, which means that this is the stickiest tire that you can get in a DOT approved tire. Now, this tire is not gonna last very long because the compound is so soft that it wears away so fast <laughs> that there's not gonna be much rubber left there maybe even after 10,000 miles. But to get the best traction on the track, to get the best grip to the road, the stickier the tire, the better. So another thing that we've done to help stiffen up the rear end and shift some more of the grip to the front of the car is locking down the rear subframe. So this has both the, the diff yoke and the rear subframe that actually holds the lateral link arms locked down to the chassis. And the way we've done that is I've actually machined my own locking collars. A lot of people use the lockdown bolts, which are these extra holes inside the rear subframe that you can run bolts into the chassis if they're there uh, and lock the rear subframe. And what that does is it stops uh, suspension geometry from shifting with the rubber bushings because these are full floating rear subframes and that is just for purely for comfort in the car from the factory and but we don't want that on the track because that suspension geometry change will cause the car to do strange things when it's loaded into the corner so something that a lot of people overlook um, is when you do all these performance modifications to your suspension and stiffen everything up and ask the chassis to do more weight transfer wise by putting thicker sway bars on is chassis rigidity because one of the things that starts to fail is when you stiffen all this up is the chassis will flex rather than the suspension doing its job. So what we've done is added an auto power six point bolt-in cage. Uh, this is a NASA spec and SCCA spec so not only is it great for us getting into those classes for racing but it adds a lot of chassis support and stops the front end from shifting from the rear, twisting basically in the middle of the car. And this ties in some major points right next to the, to the frame rails in the front, in the rear behind the seat, and then to the rear strut tower. So essentially you're tying both the front and rear strut towers almost completely together through the frame rails in the front of the car. And so this will cause the suspension to do more of the work rather than the chassis deflecting away from the suspension. So my setup may not be perfect for your Subaru because we've actually swapped the subframes out out of a newer GD chassis uh, WRX which actually increases the track width. Um, now every car is different, right? And by kind of feeling the, the way the car acts on the track and then going and making fine adjustments, you can eventually come up with the suspension setup that works best for you. But just so you guys know, any of these things that you do to your car will totally decrease the drivability on the street. I mean, this is by no means a daily driver anymore. <laughs> Once you do polyurethane bushings and increase your spring rates and stiffen up your sway bars, the car becomes extremely stiff. And by, you know, it's great on the track, but on the street, it's just horrible for your back and I don't recommend it.